All right, um, this one is uh, about water reabsorption, the counter current multiplier, the bit on the loop of Henley, uh, the bit that people generally are not too keen on when it comes to uh, the kidney. Just before we get to it, I think this is worth um, remembering. If I, uh, there's a bit of a prop here. If this red represents some kind of solute, so we've got a beaker of solute here, it doesn't matter what it is, salt, whatever. And the blue is going to represent uh, water molecules. There we go. There are two ways I could increase the, the concentration of this um, solution. I could add more salt to it. I could put more salt uh, particles in. Um, but the other way I can increase the concentration is to remove water. Okay, So even though I've not added any extra salt, because I've removed more solvent, it's become more concentrated. So do bear that in mind, because what we're going to be doing is, is removing water from um, solutions, and that's what's going to change the concentration. So keep that in mind all the way through this. Okay, um, before we... Let's, let's just not think of this as a kidney for a moment. Let's think of this um, as... Let's just have some kind of tube like this. You, you'd probably be able to work out what this is, but it, it's not important. And into this end of the tube, we're going to run a solution of um, water and salt. Sodium chloride. Okay. So then it comes into the tube. Now, I think one of the problems with um, this part of the kidneys, or a look at a counter current multiplier, is it doesn't seem to have a beginning. You can't easily point to it and say, ah, well, it starts there. It all seems to, to flow into one thing. So what we're doing is a bit artificial, but not to worry. I'm going to give you a, a summary version anyway at the end. Just stick with it. So salt and water comes in here. Now, what we're going to have um, in these cells along here, um, in the membranes of these cells, is excuse this, some protein pumps. Okay. Now, just to, to make clear, they are actually, this is going to happen on both sides. Okay, remember this is, um, although I've drawn it in two dimensions, it's a cylinder, or it's a tube, so it would go all the way around. What these pumps do is they pump out the salt. We'll come back to exactly what's happening with the salt in a bit. For a moment, let's just call it salt, okay? It actually splits into ions, but let's not worry about that. So we're going to pump this stuff out. Now remember this is constantly getting refreshed, so as we're pumping salt out of there, new salt, salty water is coming this way. So there's lots of salt at this end. Now what we're doing is we're actually building up here quite a lot of salt. There's more salt molecules out here than inside of the tube. There's a higher concentration of salt out here than inside the tube, in other words. So this isn't happening by diffusion, this is all active transport. I need to make that clear. It's active transport using energy released from hydrolysis of ATP to ADP, blah blah blah, you know this stuff. Okay, so we're pumping the salt out, this liquid's moving on, so the further on it gets, there is less and less salt because we pumped it out earlier on. Okay, so these pumps, they're all pumping out salt, but there's just less and less of it. Just to show you it's also happening on the other side like that. So we still get salt out here, but just not as much. Mainly it's all down this bottom end. Okay. Remember this is flowing and off it goes. Now, you might be saying, aha, what about the water? Wouldn't the water move to the area of higher concentrated salt as well? Uh, via osmosis. Well, it would, except that these the walls here, these cells, the cells that make up this wall, are impermeable to water. So we don't get water coming out. The water stays in the tube. They're waterproof. Okay. At the same time, let's use a different colour here, I'm going to have another tube, and this other tube is going to run, same idea, it's going to have salt water running through it, but it's going to run in the opposite direction. So, same kind of idea, salt water coming down here. Now, this tube isn't... Um, the, isn't impermeable to water, so water can move out. So if I just put the rest of the water in, as we get further along, water will start to move out via osmosis. Of course, it's going to move out more down this end because there's more salt. So you'll get some moving out here, but not as much. 
So what's happening to the salt? Well, as the salt's moving down here, we might expect it to also be diffusing out when it gets to this end. But here's the other thing, and I don't think this is clear in your books. This tube is impermeable to salt. So the salt will stay in inside this tube. So as we're getting further and further down, remember this bit we said with the, um, the salt and the water? Because we're removing water from this, the water's um, being removed by osmosis, because we're removing water, this solution is getting more and more concentrated. So in other words, the further down we get here, it's getting saltier and saltier because there are less water molecules. We're not adding salt, but there's less water. Now if I just join these tubes up, of course, what we're seeing is our old friend, uh, the loop of Henley. Okay. Of course, I've drawn it that side, but if I turn it around this way, you can see that what we have is the descending limb and the ascending limb. The ascending limb going up, oh, I've drawn it on the side here, is sometimes called the thick ascending limb. It's got thicker walls that don't let the water through. This side, thinner walls, but it doesn't let the salt through. Remember, the salt here, it doesn't go through with sodium chloride. It's an ion, or it ionizes. So it would split into um, Na plus and Cl minus. Ions do not easily pass through these membranes. They're charged particles. The phospholipid membrane is um, non-polar on the inside. So charged particles don't easily pass through. I could continue drawing you know, this all the way around and putting all the bits in. But this is the key idea. The further down you go, turn it around again this way, the further down you go, the more salt there is. Much more salt. Now, if you look at these um, pumps for a second, here, where there's lots and lots of salty liquid as it comes around, and there's lots of salt on the outside, they're actually not pumping against quite as big as a concentration gradient as you'd think. There's a lot of salt in there, there's a bit more salt out here, so it's pumping against that. There's less salt in here, but there's also now less salt on the outside, so it's got less to pump against. By the time it gets up here, there's le very little salt, but there's also very little salt outside. So in fact, the pumps are never pumping against that high of a concentration gradient all the way through. And this is why it's sometimes called the multiplier. It's not as if the pumps at the bottom are doing lots and lots of, lots of work. Um, they're all just pumping it against a little bit. So this is why I think it's easier to, to start with, with this step, just imagine the salt water coming in, salt solution, um, and it's getting pumped out here. So there's more of it here because we've got a lot more salt in the loop of Henley. I seem to be repeating the word salt a lot tonight. What you'll see in your books is um, these odd numbers. I suppose it's about them here. Um, it starts at the top and it's around 600. Um, it goes down to about 1200, and it's not necessarily brilliantly clear what it is. This is um, something called milliosmoles per kilogram. Um, it's worth remembering those numbers. It's worth remembering at the bottom it's around 1200 milliosmoles per kilogram. All it's saying is um, it's a, a kind of measure of um, how much water will be pulled out if you like. That, that's what it's trying to get at. You could just talk about it in terms of salt concentration. Remember as well that this part of the loop of Henley, if I draw a quick, uh, quick nephron out, this part of the loop of Henley is in um, the medulla. That's the cortex. You often get these questions where um, it talks about animals with a longer loop of Henley, what happens? Well, it's pretty straightforward. The longer this is, the more chance you've got to to pump the salt out, so the salt it will be at the bottom compared to at the top. So animals with a long loop of Henley are much better at absorbing water, so you'd expect that in desert animals. Um, common kind of question to, uh, to get asked about that. I did say I'd summarise it very quickly. The quick version is, the further into the medulla you go, the saltier it gets. Higher up, it's less salty. If it's very salty down here, we draw lots of water out from this descending limb and the ascending limb is pumping out more sodium chloride. So the ascending limb, the one going up, is impermeable to water, 
and the descending limb, the one coming in, is pretty much, not totally, but pretty much impermeable to salts.